The next episode of the commercial break starts now. Ah, yeah, cats and kittens. Welcome back to the commercial break. I'm Brian Green. This is my Rudy Tootie, fresh and fruity co-host, Kristen Joy Holdley. Best to you, Chris. Ed. And best to you, Brian. And best to you out there in the podcast universe. I'm reading an interesting article uh, coming out of China. You know we have a thing with China. Yeah, we do. There's a thing. We got a deal with China. We got it. Let me. We're flexing. Yeah, we're we're flexing. They're flexing. Everybody's yep. flexing. There was a balloon. Something about balloons or something like that. <laughs> but as the as a noted geopoliticist, let me share with you what's really going on because I just recently watched a video that was very informative. It all has to do with microchips. Yep. We here in the United States are creating the very complicated and ever faster and smarter, or I guess faster microchips would be the best way to put mm-hmm. it. And then we're shipping them off, shipping the designs off to Taiwan so that they can make them in these ever tighter rooms because like one piece of dust could fall off the ceiling and ruin a whole ruin batch it. of oh, wow. microchips. And they're very expensive to build. And so the chip makers have decided, well, or the chip creators have decided, well, we don't want to spend all that money on infrastructure to build these. Mm-hmm. We'll ship them off to, China, to Taiwan where they do it very well. And now there's a fight over who gets the microchips. So that's your lesson for today. I'm going to stop there. <laughs> I don't know anything about well, thank you, noted <laughs> You're welcome. geopoliticist. That was very informative. <laughs> I don't know a fucking thing about geopolitics. What am I talking about? <laughs> I just realized I was getting into territory that clearly people are going to be like, what is this dude talking about? <laughs> it's about the microchip. So next time you're at Thanksgiving dinner and your racist grandfather says something, go, it's about the microchip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but China, during the pandemic, they had those like really intense lockdowns. They and did. so something popped up like a QVC type show on the Internet popped up. I mean, a number of them popped up. And so they would, you know, go live, show their wares, and then people would buy them online. <laughs> I think we saw something like that with the gems. We did with the gems. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but I don't think that was I don't think that's what they're talking about. That was like a TikTok show where okay. they were like <laughs> putting a bunch of rocks in a bag for five dollars. <laughs> they clearly weren't worth five dollars, <laughs> but it was fun to watch them nonetheless. <laughs> And this went on for days, by the way. They just had this channel going for, like, this TikTok Live going for days where they just kept on scooping rocks out. And, ah, oh, I got one for you, $5 for you, $6 for you. I didn't understand a fucking word that was said, but I was fascinated you for, are. like, hours. <laughs> I was fixated on You're this like, You've got to watch this. you got to watch this. And everybody else likes, yeah, there's rocks. The good has got rocks. What are you fascinated by? But, 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 but. It's just my OCD and overdrive. Um, so they have these channels that would pop up live and then you would, you know, they would show you their goods and then they would sell them. One of the things that became really popular was to sell women's lingerie this way, as you can imagine, like, you know, give them a little visual representation of what they're going to see in the bedroom sure. and then let the ladies or the guys buy it for the ladies or you could buy it, the guys could buy it for the guys, whatever it was, whatever you're into, right? Whatever the yeah. Chinese Communist Party allows you to be into. <laughs> so I'm probably getting, you know, I'm probably getting blocked on TikTok <laughs> as we speak. Probably. <laughs> well, it was fun having listeners in China. There you go. Um, but what happened is the, the, the CCP, the, the Chinese Party, mm-hmm. Communist Party, they decided that it was too risque it was too much to have women in lingerie and guys on the other end salivating. You know, they have a pretty <laughs> tight lockdown on. They have a pretty tight lockdown on the internet over there. Uh-huh. So they said, "No more women in lingerie. Can't do it." Period. End of sentence. No more. So guess what? The lingerie companies did. <laughs> they started putting men in women's lingerie. <laughs> I love it. And it's and it's working. Uh-huh. It's working because they just take you know um, young. It, it, men and they doll them up a little bit and then they put them out in the lingerie and people are still <laughs> buying. Yes, I think this is an idea whose time has come. <laughs> I say we send that internet out, send that channel right on over into Florida and see what happens. <laughs> Let's see if we can change a few hearts and minds down there because I think it's I think it's just great. I actually think it's just fucking great that they found this loophole mm-hmm. and apparently a lot of the women, a lot of the people who own these channels who are directing these these shows are women. So the women decided, no, you're not going to cut me out of the loop. I'm just, I'm going to... Yeah, get around it. Yeah, I'm going to turn the other cheek. Mm -hmm. Literally. Literally. (laughs) Turn the other cheek. (laughs) And put these men in front of the cameras of the lingerie. And I thought, what a brilliant idea. And it's working. The channels are still selling lingerie. Best to them. Best to them. (laughs) Uh, That's our best to you story for the day. Yeah. (laughs) Here's a thought. Just a thought. I'm just going to throw this out there. Not a political show, never have been, never will be. But here's just the thought. 
when the Chinese Communist Party is more liberal <laughs> than a state <laughs> in the United States, you might have you might have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you might have an issue. Just just saying that out loud. Yeah. Um, and then oh. And, and then there was another article that I was reading. Do you know this guy? And this is today's topic. Do you know this guy, uh, Tyler? I want to make sure I get his last. Tyler Henry. Have no. you ever seen Tyler, Tyler Henry? Mm-mm. He was on an E! show called like Hollywood's Medium or something. Really young guy, blonde hair. Oh, maybe. Kind of has a weird uh, accent going on, like a weird affectation in his voice. Yeah, he was like a psychic. Yeah, he's a psychic. Mm-hmm. He's young. He's like 20 years old. And then his eyes are always darting everywhere. And he's like, <laughs> he takes a pen and he's like doodling while he's getting messages from the other side. <laughs> I thought to myself, well, this would be great. Like, let me dig into Tyler Henry and we'll see if we got another target here at the commercial break. Yes like it or something else to talk about the challenge is when i the more that i dig about tyler henry the more that i realize that there's a lot of people out there who are writing that tyler was right because tyler doesn't talk to dead people and talk about the things that happened in the past tyler talks about the things that are going to happen in the future Ooh, now that's where the real that's where the rubber meets the road yes because anybody can look up on the internet like that fucking Teresa caputo that we'll talk about in a second anybody can look up on the internet what's happened to you all it takes is one plant in the audience yeah. or one... Or generalization. Generalization. Too. Who's died from a yeah. heart attack? <laughs> <laughs> Who's got toes? Yeah. Do I have anybody with toes in the crowd? <laughs> but it's really hard to predict something, talk about someone's health that's going to happen, in, something about someone's health that's going to happen in the future, or just be spot on with a regular Joe who you've never met before. Mm-hmm. Like literally not a cold reading, but you're just putting somebody in a room one-on-one and asking them to read that. So... I'm still not 100% sold, right? I'm still would not. Would you want to know if? No. Yeah. No. I think maybe I would. I have <laughs> no interest in knowing. I've thought about this a million times. If somebody, if I could. I mean, I want to know if I've got something currently for sure. But that I might but have But a doctor can tell me to, that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's just going to the doctor. Yeah. That's just. <laughs> This is getting old. You just go to the doctor every three seconds. I went to the doctor the other day. I was complaining about a couple of things that I thought strung together could be something to worry about. Uh-huh. Right? And his response was, you know, anxiety can make this stuff worse too. <laughs> he basically laughed yeah. me out of the office. He's like, okay, dude, you got some headaches and some sunspots. You're going to be fine. Everything's okay. <laughs> You're 80. <laughs> you know what he actually told me? He said, for those headaches, stop taking Advil. Mm. Stop taking something for the headaches. You're getting a bounce back headache. Your your body's getting addicted to it, and it's causing the headaches. He goes, I, I can almost guarantee you. And guess what? Wow. He was fucking right. Mm-hmm. Stop, taking the, stop taking the Advil every day, and the headaches go away. So, anyway, so this guy, Tyler Henry, he has had celebrities. He's had normal Joes. He's had everything. And I've read a couple of articles. Like one lady walked in there with a couple of her relatives, and he said, one of your relatives is going to pass really soon, like a grandfather, grandmother type. And guess what? Within three days, the grandfather was dead. Within three Jeez. days. And I hope this they happened. had a chance to say goodbye. Well, I mean, if you get a message, God. if you believe enough <laughs> to go- You're about to die. Yes. If you believe enough to go on fucking e-television <laughs> and be subjected to this kind of shit, and he tells you your grandfather's going to die, and you don't call your grandfather, mm. you're just an asshole. That's all I got to say. He's done Corey Haim. He's done- Julia, I think, not Julia Roberts, uh, Courtney Cox. He's done a lot of different people. And they all have said, the guy kind of was spot on. Wow. So there might actually be something to this psychic thing, which I never said that there there couldn't be. I just don't believe that one particular person Mm -hmm. is at all (laughs) real. And her name is Teresa fucking Caputo. (laughs) (laughs) Teresa. You remember how we have a thing with China? Like yep. the United States has a thing with China? TCB has a thing with Teresa Caputo. True. Because I cannot stand this person. This person to me is a bad hairdo and an earpiece away from being nothing. She does cold readings and she does them badly. She fails almost every single... You put Teresa in front of 100 people, 40 people, 20 people... And you say, go out and do a cold reading. Like she often subjects herself to on Regis and, uh, you know, Ryan and Kelly or whatever show she's gone on. She goes to the audience and she starts doing these cold readings. And when you watch the cold readings with any amount of, I guess, skepticism, you can see that what Teresa is doing 
is just an old circus trick. It is. Yeah. It's an old snake oil salesman trick. How does the trick go? Well, some of you have been listeners of the show will understand I've had this diatribe before, but let me explain for those new to the show. It's like a big funnel. And if you leave the top of the funnel as broad as possible, you can ask leading questions until it seems like you're hitting on something specific, but you're really not. You're just saying things that almost describe everybody. Let me give you an example. Uh, Does anybody in the audience know a man, someone with a penis? No? No. What about a vagina? A canine? Have you ever seen a dog? Does anybody know what a giraffe is? Have you ever seen clouds? The sky is blue. Am I right about that? Okay, great. Uh, I've got someone behind me, and they're standing there, and they're rubbing the genitalia, which means that they're dead. Are they dead? No? Well, who else is dead? Does anybody have anybody dead? Does anybody know anybody yeah, dead? She quickly drops She anybody quickly drops that, anybody that says no, no. and she yep. moves on to the next mm-hmm. with these incredibly broad and yes. leading questions. Something to do with the heart. Yeah. Well, I mean... <laughs> Does anybody have legs? <laughs> Does anybody in the audience have a leg? Okay, that's, that's good. I, I sense that. There's someone behind me shaking their leg, and that's usually an indication that someone has a leg. <laughs> What was the one, too, where they, she was like, he says for you to go have a glass of wine, and the universal symbol for that is... Oh, yeah, she was like... like <laughs> no, she goes, off. I see him drinking a glass of wine. That's his indication that you're traveling to Italy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and she was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> Canada? No. Somewhere in the United States. Well, I came here to New York. Exactly. <laughs> that glass of wine it works every time. It's a sign for traveling to anywhere, especially New York. <laughs> She's so bad at what she does. So Chrissy and I have a personal belief, and I don't know this to be true. I'm just saying I think. I think Teresa Caputo has an earpiece in that ear or a device on the top of that wig, in the, under that wig. It's signaling. That's signaling to her. Like there's a producer somewhere that's signaling to her. And Chrissy and I believe that we have actually seen the producers on certain shows signaling to her when they get out of the camera angle, like when they move a little too far left or too far right. Mm-hmm. There's a whole cadre of people over there <laughs> waving their arms and screaming and yelling like, <laughs> no, no, go there, go there. Right, not that one, yeah. this one. Not to mention, how easy is it to put a plant in an audience, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, you think the fucking view is checking who comes in the door? <laughs> no. no. They're just glad people showed up at 6 in the morning to watch them record. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. And don't they have to fill out the uh, you questionnaire, know, questionnaire yes. name, social media handles, whatever? I think they do. I think mm-hmm. that, well, it depends on who you... You can't actually bring cameras or phones into her live events, Mm -hmm. but you can read multiple accounts. Now, it depends on your perspective. If your perspective is that Teresa Caputo really does talk to dead people, then you're going to find a reason to believe that. If you watch it, just I think objectively, what you're seeing is just a person cold reading an entire room. She knows where she wants to go. She has producers that tell her which people to talk to. Imagine this, okay? You go to get your Teresa Caputo tickets at TeresaCaputo.com or whatever, Ticketmaster, and they quickly find out a bunch of information about you, where you live, your IP address, email, email, all this other stuff. From that email, you can get all the social media handles. From those social media handles, you can figure out anything that anybody is all about. Why? Because we're all fucking dipshits posting everything about our life. Every moment (laughs) we got to post about our lives. So all it takes is the ability to know where that person is in the crowd or finding something so specific, like grandma died and we put a red rose on her chest when we buried her, yep. right? And all it takes is that question. Did someone bury their grandmother with a red rose? Oh, that's me. Oh, but still my heart. <laughs> and then Teresa comes flying over. Uh-huh. to ask take more leading questions, to take credit <laughs> for what's going on. There's a million people behind her, a million ghosts behind her, dancing and jumping and rubbing their genitalia. I mean, I don't even know what's going on in this head. So this really bugs the shit out of me. And I'll tell you why. It's because I don't like Teresa giving people false hope, hope that they are actually communicating with someone from the other side. It seems pretty cruel to me, actually. And then to be making a shitload of money off of it seems double cruel. Right. Well, I mean, on one hand, it could be comforting to some people. On the other hand, though, to you, the, the people that it's comforting to, I mean, if I think that Teresa just spoke to my mother who died. 
You'd never leave her alone. Well, no, I would want her to keep talking of to course. my mother. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> that must have been how she made money before she had the television right, show. People kept coming back. Yeah, there was like 10 people that just kept coming back. Mm-hmm. And now you're two years into a relationship with somebody. Of course, you know everything about them. Yes. You're not doing readings anymore. You're just having a conversation. And that's what Teresa does. She talks a lot. She makes jokes a lot to get people laughing because it's hard to be discerning when you're when you're in a state of uh, joy or emotion or laughing or whatever, or sadness. But then the other thing that just like totally, totally blows my fucking mind about Teresa Caputo is that no one has ever really called her to task. Like mm-hmm. no one's ever said, how exactly do you stand in a room full of people and you're asking questions rapid fire and you're making jokes and you're laughing and you're communicating with the audience members and you have 50 ghosts behind you right. jumping, dancing, doing hula hoops on a roller coaster, down on a – whatever. Yeah, because when she messes up, she'll say, it's confusing. There's so many ghosts yeah. around me. Or She doesn't even call them Someone, spirits. Yeah, spirits. Spirits. The spirits all are, are they got all around. Two spirits humpbacking each other. <laughs> <laughs> what does she call piggybacking? They're piggybacking yes. off each other. Yes. Piggybacking. <laughs> I can see that. I guess like a little kid <laughs> riding on his dad's back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, so I, yeah. I, I can barely keep up with one conversation. Thank God this is a podcast. <laughs> we put another person in this room. All hell goes breaks loose. You want to know why? I can talk to two people at the same time. I barely keep up with myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so all of this objectively as an objective uh, observer who's some, someone who might believe or might not believe depending on what the evidence or the circumstances are i'm open to the idea but i don't think it's true but i'm open to the idea i objectively think teresa caputo is full of fucking shit yeah. and i'm sorry if you believe we've have a few listeners out there that have written us that say they believe teresa did a reading for them blah 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 if you believe and it's good for you great then yeah keep going but you're right about one thing if my loved one dies tomorrow. Someone that I love close to me dies tomorrow. I go to a Teresa reading and she tells me that my loved one is communicating with me in any way, shape, or form. And I have a bad day at the office. I'm finding Teresa. Yes. And I'm going to be like, I want to talk to my wife about it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I need to give grandma one last hug. Please. She's got to give me the banana muffin recipe. Because <laughs> yes. every grandma is good at banana muffins. Uh-huh. And they never give you that damn recipe. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll give it to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> so, without further ado, I was strolling on the internet. As you do. As I do like to do. And I found a clip from one of our favorite muses, Teresa Caputo, on the Meredith Vieira show. That tells uh-huh. you how old this is. <laughs> when did Meredith have a show? <laughs> Uh, a while like back. 10 years ago? <laughs> was it 10 years ago? Five no. years ago? No? What? I think it was fairly, you know, I, I don't know. There, I have no concept of time now after COVID. <laughs> I have no concept of time in the commercial break. <laughs> yes, We're the, here all the fucking true. time. Yeah. <laughs> <That too. laughs> We're here all the fucking time. I don't know what day it is anymore. All right. Let's listen to Teresa. What is it that... Well, the sixth sense, I feel like that's how I grew oh, up. Wait, hold on. I started a little late. A purely professional so operation here. Most of us can't communicate um, with those, who, or, or we, well, we've blocked ourselves. But right. But can you explain what the we experience blocked ourselves. is like? Is there any? We blocked ourselves. <laughs> I'm not blocking myself from seeing ghosts. I want to see ghosts. I know. <laughs> if that shit's real, come and visit. I'm waiting for the day when one of those spooky things climbs out of my closet. And <laughs> says, "I'm looking for Bob. He used to live here." <laughs> Well, I bought the house from Bob, and if you're going to live in my closet, we're going to have to talk about rent. <laughs> Can you take care of the kids while I go out for a couple hours? I'm going to go to the strip club. No? You can't do that? You can't move stuff around? Uh. Movie or TV show that even gets it partially correct? My two favorite is The Sixth Sense and Ghost. It's my favorite. And why, why though? Well, hold on. Yeah. Go- ghost. You're going Ghost. You're going Patrick Swayze pottery. You're going class. Patrick Swayze Host dirty dancing, beefed up beefcake, hottest guy ever in that moment in time. And then you're going Sixth Sense, Academy Award winning betra- uh, portrayal of how ghosts interact with small children right. and save the world or whatever. <laughs> you didn't go with ghost hunters, did you, Teresa? No, no. But they think they're real, too. 
What is it that? Well, the sixth sense, I feel like that's how I grew up. I just would just see things and feel things and sense things that I didn't realize not everybody else was. I mean, I actually thought it was normal. I thought everyone sensed and felt the same things that I did. And ghosts, because I feel like she connected with the personality of the souls. How, and that's why I feel is the best validate. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa's got a thousand motherfucking ghosts she's friends with. I can't even get together with one of my friends for drinks. <laughs> but Teresa's makes, keeping up with a thousand it, ghosts. I guess it makes it easier if they come to you all the time. Yeah, if they're just hanging out with you all the time. What happens when you're taking a shower? <laughs> You see a bunch of rowdy ghosts outside driving the Driving a car. I mean, yeah, driving a car, making love to your husband. <laughs> Hold on, I got a ghost jizzing on my back. <laughs> He's piggybacking. He's piggybacking me. <laughs> is that your hand on my tits or is that a ghost fronty backing me? Piggy fronting me. <laughs> He's piggy fronting me. <laughs> That's why I want spirits to communicate with personality the way that they were before they were sick to really validate for us that when the soul leaves the physical body, we leave any disease, ailment, or disability behind. Is Our any souls spirit communicate? You don't say, Teresa. No. You mean if I get in a car accident? <laughs> You're not mangled. Yeah, if I get a <laughs> That's right. And I lose an eyeball? <laughs> I get to have a new one as a ghost? <laughs> don't ask with you right now well there's always spirit souls present um i always sense and feel them but what happens is when we're in a large room i don't know they're all just present so they will guide me to be somewhere someone i could be speaking over here and you might if the ghost is able to talk to you directly while you're speaking to other people why are they not able to give you the name of that person Teresa? yeah exactly yeah it that's the big hole in your story, it's Cindy, kid. Cindy, my granddaughter over there. Yeah, Cindy. My, Cindy, my granddaughter. Tell her that, you know, Nana loves her and <laughs> yeah. forgot to give her the banana muffin recipe. <laughs> Here, let me piggy front you and I'll walk you over there. <laughs> I'm going to go on tour and I'm going to start saying the ghosts are piggy fronting me. <laughs> uh, I'll just make weird facial movements. I'll be like, ah, ah. Sorry, I'm getting piggy fronted. <laughs> hey, oh, my God, but that sounds like me. Know that that's a message from your loved ones as well. Um, but She speaks with such authority. Know that that's a loved one from your message, the message from your loved one. By the way, half this audience, not convinced. Look at all these people. No, they are clearly skeptical. not convinced. Yeah. This is why these kind of rooms are bad for Teresa and why they always look like big fails. Is because there's so many people in the audience, you can't control whether or not someone believes Teresa. But she handles that with a joke and a smile and she just does. moves on to uh -huh. the next person. There was a mother energy that stepped forward and she said to me, she goes, my daughter is so upset that she didn't bring my jewelry or didn't wear something. I feel like I would always wear it or have it every day. And I didn't bring it today. Today of all days, I didn't bring it. So that's how <laughs> that one woman says. She was like, <laughs> she had her mouth wide open. <laughs> But not in the kind of way like, oh, my God. Like in the kind of way like. <laughs> I see a mother figure. <laughs> Step forward. I see a mother who had a mother. <laughs> no, nobody. Did anybody not have a mother but had a necklace? That necklace is from the mother that would have been. Just know that. Yeah, I mean, how many people have some tiny little piece of jewelry from a parent that has passed on? I don't, alive. but that's okay. <laughs> I you, have have, things... you have two parents that are alive. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> well, that wraps up this episode oh, of the commercial break. One of your parents die. I Thank God know. my mom doesn't know how to download <laughs> oh, podcasts. <my> <laughs> <God. laughs> no, but I was thinking about my grandmother or my grandfather, but, uh, you know, no, I didn't get any jewelry from them. But of course, <laughs> why would they leave me jewelry? I felt and I felt that I was over here is, is it your mom that that's departed but would did, did you always do you always bring she things grabs the microphone she grabs a microphone it's getting serious mm -hmm. she found a willing lark mm -hmm. who's probably a plant but let's move on of her like I felt you always had her with you and like today was the day you didn't bring her in of all days Teresa's here she loved Meredith Oh. And she wanted to come to the show. We were here in October, and we had an issue, and we didn't get in. We came back in December. We came back on the 12th. She died on the 11th. 
But we came anyway to be here. And you then we found quit? Wait, what? What? <laughs> what? What the good what fuck is, is going on here? The mom died on the 11th and they the, kept the tickets? On the, the 12th? <laughs> Sounds like your mom didn't leave you anything in the will. <laughs> I mean, come on. Wow. Your mom dies on the 11th? You go to Meredith fucking Vieira on the 12th? Yeah. I mean, listen, Conan O'Brien's Another last hard show. Tickets. Yeah, <laughs> the Meredith Vieira show. I don't think it was hard tickets. <laughs> like you know, Chris Rock, One Night Only, live on Netflix. I get it. You know, you're <laughs> showing up for Meredith Vieira. Coming today, we're like, Mom, come on, tell us that you went to Meredith with us. So you, <laughs> there you go. You brought. <laughs> there you go. There was. <laughs> There you go was nothing. She was saying about a piece of jewelry. Yeah, she said you you missed a piece of jewelry. That's not what that lady said. She said, if we're going to go see Teresa, uh, have Teresa give us a sign that mom's with us. That was not the sign. She's so wrong. But here she is taking there you credit. Go, there there you, go. you go. There you go. You did have a mom. I told you. <laughs> That's amazing. You had a mother. <laughs> amazing. Talk about the husband is stepping forward that is departed. Who is what? married? Who has a husband? I mean, there's so many women there. It's all, it's women. all women. Who and has a husband? Who has a husband energy? Who has a husband but doesn't want to have a husband? <laughs> okay, that's half the audience. I got to have to slim this down a little bit. Talk about the husband who lost their husband. They're telling me I'm over here. Did you lose your husband? Oh my God, that woman's your 90 years old. Your husband wants to just take this opportunity to thank you for the way that you cared for him. Do you understand that? And he <laughs> says, I wish I was. I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. I know. That's someone's but misery, yeah. but it's so fake. Oh. He told me to tell you he, that, that he really thanked you for all the care he did. Why couldn't he have told me when he was alive? <laughs> Asshole. I was able to tell her that. And he says, and do you know how she took care of me and never showed me her frustrations? Is that correct, ma'am? And you would go in a room and cry and say, I can't do this. Oh, my God. Half of marriage is being in a room <laughs> crying, crying about how I can't do this anymore. <laughs> what is so unique about this? I don't get it. I really don't. This could be anybody. Oh. <sighs> Your husband wants to thank you for caring for him and allowing him to leave the physical world with dignity and grace. But can you give her his social security <laughs> number? He's right there. Talk to him. What's his name? What's her name? Yeah, Where do they live? How many kids do they have? What color dog do they get? I mean, come on. Did he used to call you D my darling or? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Fuck this lady. Fuck this lady. Did he used to call you darling? <laughs> the most common term of endearment ever? How is that possible? <laughs> Was there Because he leaned over and kissed you and said... I love you, my darling. And I've never heard darling before. I don't, you know, I don't think that that's a common term. Yes, you know. it ah! is. There are songs written. <laughs> <laughs> darling is not a common term. You've used it, Teresa. I guarantee if we go back and we look at these tapes, she's used it a million times. Oh, yeah. Um, so just know that it is just his way of saying that he wish he told you how much he appreciated and more importantly, how much he loves you. I want to talk about the son that departed. <clears throat> do you Anyone? Mean, do you mean the sun in the sky? <laughs> it's every night around seven it departs. <laughs> and I've been wondering where it's going. <laughs> want to talk about the son that's departed? I want to talk about he takes responsibility for his departure. Do you understand that, ma'am? This does not mean that it might not be your loved one as well. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? It could be two people at the same time because they're splitting into two people. They're now piggybacking each other. It's just like Brokeback Mountain behind me. <laughs> they found love in the afterlife. But when he stepped forward, he opened up his hands and showed me the white doves, which is my symbol for that his so soul. Is, is someone with her? Can you just hold white that, please? White doves. Oh, my God. 
I saw White Doves one time on a Prince video on MTV. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that on a lot of funeral type related stuff? Too, they don't do it anymore white. because the doves die the second you let them go. <laughs> it just flopped out. No, I mean like on caskets or oh, on yeah, tombstones. A dove yeah. is a sign yeah. of eternity. And in the Catholic religion, doves mean like it's very symbolic, right? Mm-hmm. The Christian religion, the Catholic religion, doves are very symbolic. It's not unusual for an older woman probably to equate doves with death. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, when spirit steps forward and takes responsibility for their departure, it means that they do not want us to carry the burdens or guilt or the should have, could have, would have, so the only ifs that they would still be here. The white doves is my symbol for that you fear that his soul is not at peace because of the way that he departed. Wait, my white dove. <laughs> <laughs> Your white doves are the sign for a paragraph and a half <laughs> Specific to this lady. How many times have you seen white doves, Teresa? So you know that his soul is safe and at peace with God. And more importantly, thanking you. No, it's for- not safe and at peace with God because he's running around your head telling you a bunch of shit. <laughs> he can't stop. This poor bastard is just stuck at the Meredith Vieira show. <laughs> In the studio. In the studio. <laughs> How many 19-year-old kids want to be at the Meredith Vieira show? That kid wants to be at a Pantera reunion concert. (laughs) Go there, Teresa. All of the prayers. Did he uh, have, how old was he? Did he have a a girlfriend? (laughs) She's right here. He knelt down and said, will you marry me? (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. I think Teresa just took it way too far. Oh, yeah, she could, way she, too I saw far. her wheels turning too. Yeah, she was. Yeah. She was like, "I got one. Yeah, I, I got, got one. one. I got one. I'm going to keep going." Because, digging, because she's digging. really having make him cry. Make him cry. Make him cry. Make, make him cry. cry. Seems believable. Everyone believes yeah. me when someone's crying. <laughs> yeah. This is terrible, and because she's having trouble connecting with this audience, because it's it's taken her a while to get these questions answered. So she's got to go in for the kill, mm-hmm. right? She is. Yep. Yeah. So were you supposed to get married, or did you talk about getting married? Yeah. Did I? Were you going to get his handwriting tattooed on you? Or? Yeah. <laughs> right here. I have I love you right here. What? Oh, <laughs> oh come on. She, she saw... has it tattooed. She saw the tattoo. She saw the tattoo on the wrist. And then, and then she, she says, said, do you have his yeah. handwriting mm-hmm. on? Yes. One of her producers or someone caught that. Because a lot of times when, you know, in certain cultures, when people die, they get yes. tattoos, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, this doesn't mean now you have to leave the show and go get the tattoo. (laughs) That is not what this is about. (laughs) (laughs) It must be a Beetlejuice. (laughs) She really does. About him, you knowing that he knows that you were going to do this. I want to ask her to do a cold reading with a shower cap on. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And let's see what happens. Your original hair. Shower cap, right out of the shower, shower cap. Do the show like that. Producers locked in a closet. No communi- no, no telecommunications of any sort. Do you try to go through his departure? Yeah. Because he tries to bring me through it and then he hits me in the back of the head. So when spirit does <laughs> When someone like hits me, me in the back of the head while for- I'm talking to a hundred other people, <laughs> that's my symbol for your boyfriend really wanted to make love to you on your last night together. <laughs> But it didn't happen. So he says, just know it was going to be the anal night. (laughs) That's what happens when I get hit on the back of the head. They didn't suffer. Wait, you get hit on the back of the head and it's a sign for he didn't suffer? That makes sense. Yeah. I didn't see your head move, did you? No. No, she didn't say ow? I'm just checking. So wanting you. But of course, with through that hair, how would you see anything? Exactly. No, that he did not suffer. Do you understand that? Did you? F- why do I feel trapped? He goes, I wasn't trapped. I, I, I was fine. Do you understand that? Uh, why so do I feel trapped? Happened- he wasn't trapped. Yeah. Uh, why do I feel trapped? He wasn't trapped, was he? Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Wait, was he trapped? Uh, yeah. No, he wasn't trapped. <laughs> I feel trapped. That's my sign for he's not trapped. <laughs> so weird. So strange how this is coming through. <laughs> I have to check my. I have to check my headpiece. <laughs> and to his physical body, whatever happened. He says, I want you to know that from the blow to the head, that my soul did not feel anything from that blow to the head. Fair? That's what a blow to the head means. And that he did not feel it. You didn't feel it. You didn't feel it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
When I feel an extreme amount of pain, it means that they didn't feel a thing. I'm feeling it on his behalf. Does that make sense to you? No, he was alive for 10 hours after the car accident, pinned to a tree. So sorry. It actually means he was in pain. That's what I meant. He talks, though, about his right side or his <laughs> right... tattooed with doves. Yeah. So you understand also the dove reference as well. These people are in the front row. I sense, yeah. I sense a plant. Yeah. yeah, I sense they've been planted there. Do you actually think that you saw your son in the hallway in the house or outside a bedroom door? My mom did. She called me the other day and told me that he was standing in the doorway and he said, tell my mom that I'm okay. Perfect. Did you just get the goosebumps, ma'am? Yes. <laughs> know that that was your son's soul that just moved right through you. I asked him what? to allow you. Oh, my God. Oh, man. This your is son's what, soul, soul just, just moved, moved right through, through you. you. How? Did you just get the goosebumps? Yeah. Well, yeah, if you're hitting on all these points that make you seem like you're talking to the son, you're going to get the goosebumps. And then to say that's your son moving through you. Of course. There's no doubt. If you <laughs> let lose, me hit you in the back. <laughs> yeah. Let me hit you in the back of the head with a frying pan. <laughs> I'm going to trap you in this coffin and then hit you on the head with a couple times with a frying pan. That'll teach you to say no to me again. <laughs> If you, if you, and all of us have lost someone that we love a yes, dog, a cat, yes. a person. We've all lost somebody we love. And if you think about them for more than two seconds, of course you get the chills because it's a thing that is emotionally yeah. stunting. It hurts very bad. It, it causes a lot of PTSD. It's not easy to get over. This, and this horrible human is taking advantage of all of it. All of it. She's on Meredith Vieira making millions and millions of dollars while you'll go back to your house and think you saw your son in the hallway. It's crazy. It's terrible. It's terrible. To feel him. So you knew that this was real and that where you go, your son's soul goes with you. And that what your mother saw was his soul showing himself for a brief moment, validating that he is okay. Did you lay him to rest in <laughs> casual wear? He goes, oh, I love, don't I look great, Teresa? And he has me viewing his physical body. Don't I look great, Teresa? <laughs> look at my body. Lost both my legs in that helicopter accident. How do I do? <laughs> I have to piggyback on somebody, if you know what I mean. So I pick him back off Carl. His wife's up at the top row. And he's like, I love how they put me laid to rest. He always wore um, a white tee and jeans, and that's how we laid him. Perfect. So know that he wants to thank you for that. He also says, he he goes, Teresa, he goes, do you not hear him? Do you sometimes hear him call your name? Because he goes, you are the first person that's actually saying what I'm saying. He goes, this is cool. He goes, can I, like, come with you? And I'm like, no. I'm like, you're going home with them. I got my own dead people. (laughs) She said all of this. <laughs> she had this whole conversation with him right then. While she was While on live TV was talking, talking to her. <laughs> that's right. That's there's two, there's one thing, there's one gap, one huge hole in Teresa Caputo's story that's being told constantly by this nonstop yammering Yahoo. I'm also a nonstop yammering Yahoo, so <laughs> just the spade calling a spade. But If you can talk to dead people, you hear them and communicate with them while you're unbelievably talking to a bunch of other people, you're like a Venezuelan. You're having multiple (laughs) conversations at the same time. I know this because my wife's Venezuelan. I can't understand a fucking word once they all get going. (laughs) But you cannot simply know the name of the person you're supposed to be talking to. I know. How ridiculous is that? It's the one thing that the dead people can't tell you? Yeah, my name is Mike. Tell her it's me, Mike. That's right. Remember one time the guy wrote down like a basket. He wrote like that down like NBA or something. He's like, yes. he's holding up a sign saying NBA. Why isn't he holding up the sa- sign saying my wife is Judy? <laughs> Third row, fourth to the left. <laughs> I mean, why? <laughs> why? Brian, that's not the way it works. With the spirits. No, it's not the way it works when I'm trying to get that jingle jangle out of your pocket. <laughs> So know that when you hear him, know that that is him. You're not crazy. It's not your imagination. It's not wishful thinking. Do you guys wear bracelets in memory of him? Yes. Perfect. Oh, they all have on bracelets that are clearly visible. Yeah. Do you guys wear bracelets in memory of him? You do? They all say Jason on them. I was just wondering. (laughs) So stupid. Perfect. But do you have dove jewelry? Yes, we all got Who are you? 
That's his sister. Perfect. So they, you- she, they have dove jewelry on. Mm-hmm. How do you think she figured yeah. out about the doves? Mm-hmm. Wow. Wear a dove bracelet in memory of your brother. Perfect. Because he goes this way. Perfect. Be- another another <laughs> couple of people scammed. Perfect. <laughs> You'll be paying my fee for life. <laughs> Terrible if I didn't acknowledge my sister. <laughs> Do you have to no. oh, okay, with his wait. music? What? So she just said, who are you? And pointed to that girl, a girl that goes, that's she, her sister. And then that's when she goes, well, I, I knew that already because he's already telling me it'd be tell- terrible if I didn't acknowledge my sister. He's doing cartwheels with a bottle rocket sticking out of his ass. That's my sign for you, his sister. <laughs> she didn't know. She said, who she are you? She didn't know. Yeah, who are you? The sister. <laughs> oh, good, because he told me. Yeah. You're going to be in trouble if you don't acknowledge the sister. <laughs> he didn't say, that's my I, sister. I, 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 <laughs> Please tell her I said hello. <laughs> I could do this. I could probably do it better than she does it. You play in your car or his iPod or iPhone or something? Yeah, his iPod from from 2004, <laughs> Teresa. The music. Oh, just the music to, yeah. that, that you used to listen yeah. to. But who has his phone? He talks about can't his phone. It. Can't find it. Oh. So nope. you're upset he talked about, about his that. phone. <laughs> who has his phone? I, hey, oh, none of you? None of you? I've find? got it. <laughs> I've got it right here. Now, if she did that, I'd be like, wow, now that's cool. Magic trick. <laughs> he's holding up an iPod, which is the sign that he's missing his iPhone 10. <laughs> you could have that phone. Yes. So know that if it's something, especially when Spirit brings up something that you long to have or want to have, and he says, don't worry, no one stole it. So I don't know if you're worried about that. We were. Yeah, we were. And, and I just, it was a I, robbery. I saw, like, he died in a robbery. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jesus, Chrissy. Have some respect for the dead. Oh, we're worried that somebody stole it. Let us be the only ones who have respect for the dead in this particular episode. <laughs> worried that he stole it. Yeah, where did he die? I mean, God bless. I'm so sorry. But where did he die? How did he die? Seat or shoved under something. We were thinking where the phone was. And yeah. And we were trying to figure out if it was under the car and they couldn't find it. So just know that it's okay. It's okay. I have find my, <laughs> find my ghost <laughs> on my hair. This is, <laughs> this is actually a Bluetooth device. I have find my iPhone ghost, my ghost iPhone, and I've located it in Trenton, New Jersey. <laughs> You're going to do the tree in, and bench in memory of him? We did we that did already. Tree, yeah. Perfect. No so one does that, that. No one does that. No one ever gets into a car accident where someone passes away and puts a uh, memorial there. Never yeah. seen one. Mm-mm. It's an original idea. Yep. We should think about that. Mm-hmm. Starting a business. Benchintree.com. <laughs> it's about that. Well, you were going to add something. Every, every holiday. Oh, because I go, why'd you tell me that they're going to? And he goes, oh, because they're going to add something to yeah, it. Yeah, every holiday we decorate the tree with different things. Her. See, she got caught in the lie mm-hmm. and she made up for it. Yep. She said, she's quick. Oh, yeah, she's quick. She is quick. I'll well, give her that. You know, after years and years, years of, scamming. of just lying to people, you yep. learn quickly how Those to wiggle your signs. way around. Yeah. yeah. Bing, bing, bing. Well, I'm very sorry for your loss and may God bless you and your family. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Wow, that was complete <laughs> and utter. <laughs> Horse shit. Uh, I am so glad that we don't have to do cold readings here. <laughs> the, the commercial break. After watching enough of her, though, I feel like we could. Oh yeah, we do could. Some stuff. No, it's just about having intuition and and authority. Yeah, say things with authority. That's right. Yep. Throw a joke in there. You throw a joke in there. Mm-hmm. You soften them up a little bit. Yep. You use authority. Just know. Just know this. Just know that. And then people assume you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But if you took one second to think about this, one second, I'm going to say it again. Why doesn't she know their names? (laughs) She can hear them. Did they forget their names? They remember their wife, their sister, the bracelets, the tree in the trunk or whatever the The fuck. But they can't remember their names? Doesn't make sense. But you know what? If you believe in it and it makes you happy, God bless you. Takes all kinds. There's lots of stuff I believe in. You know. Yeah. (laughs) I believe in Chupacabra. There you go. I haven't seen one yet, but I still believe in (laughs) (laughs) them. All right, guys, do us a favor. If you're new to the podcast, go to tcbpodcast.com. You can watch all the video, all the audio. It's all there at tcbpodcast.com. And if you want your 21 EPM sticker, 
21 ejaculations per month. I know it sounds funny, but Chrissy and I are trying to do our part for prostate health. (laughs) And 21 ejaculations per month will reduce your chances of prostate cancer. I'm just now making stuff up. We actually had no intention of of, of alerting anybody. And now it's a thing. There's 21 EPM stickers on cars across the world. So there you go. I like it. (laughs) Yeah, I like it too. 21 EPM sticker is 150% free. If you just do us a favor, hit the Contact Us button, tell us you want a sticker, and send us your physical address. We will send it out to you. If you'd like to talk to us, 855-TCB-8383. 1-855-TCB-8383. Toll free from anywhere in the world. Questions, comments, concerns, content ideas. We're taking them all at that phone number, and I promise you, you'll never be spammed. This goes directly to our hotline, to our TCB hotline. (laughs) At the commercial break on Instagram, TCB Live on TikTok. And youtube.com slash the commercial break. Full episodes, the same day they air on the audio, are available on YouTube and we'll know you love them. It's a whole different it's a whole different experience when it you is. watch it online. Someone told me the other day, I love them so much more than I love the audio version. Yeah. And I said, We're that bad, huh? <laughs> all right, Chrissy. Well, I guess that's all I can do today. I think so. I love you. I love you. Best to you. Best to you. And best to you out there in the podcast universe. Until next time, Chrissy and I always say, we must say, and we do say, goodbye. goodbye.